Hello world. It's the first thing a new programmer writes in any language and the subject of countless getting started videos. But what if you wrote hello world in 50 languages? Because apparently that's my idea of a good way to spend a Saturday. That's exactly what I did. Except, well, I really only wrote it in 49 because some of these languages are so confusing that I couldn't even figure out how to write Hello World after an hour of trying. I also didn't even know anywhere near 50 languages, so I had to go spelunking on Wikipedia to assemble a list. Some of these are pretty niche, and some of these date all the way back to the 1950s, which, given how much computers have changed since then, is crazy. I started out with a bunch of the most common languages, and for most of these I already had some experience working with them, so I figured this section would be the quickest to knock out. I found some online compilers that ended up saving me a ton of time so that I didn't have to install stuff for all 50 languages locally, which sounds terrible now that I think about it. The only thing that was kind of annoying is that some of the websites by default already had the code for Hello World provided, which I guess for most people is probably convenient, but it meant that every time I launched the page I had to delete it and recreate it myself just so I didn't feel like I was cheating. After speeding through the initial low-hanging fruit, I started getting into some of the old and the weird. The first thing I noticed is that after getting used to mostly a lot of console.log and print statements, some of these languages had some interesting syntax that I've never seen in any language I've used. Some of these things included using periods for the end of the line, different ways to display things on the screen, having to use the word by at the end of the program, and needing to have outer parentheses wrapped around the print statement. Also, there were a handful that were so niche that none of the online compilers had them, so I had to install them locally, which meant I got to write them from a blank file, but I also have no idea when I'd ever need to write anything else in one of those languages, and now they're just sitting on my computer. But other than some of the terrifying languages that are coming up, probably the most unique one was Scratch, which is MIT's block-oriented language to help kids learn to code. I actually had an account from when my high school used this years ago, but I already knew how to code then, and there's something weird about switching back to using blocks after getting used to normal programming syntax. At this point, I knocked out the first 45 languages, and it ended up going a lot quicker than I expected because I was able to use online compilers. But just to make things interesting, I decided to pick five completely impractical languages to round out the 50. These are the types of languages that you would never actually use unless you wanted to cause yourself a lot of pain, which sounds about right. First up was LOL code, which I think is probably meant to be a really exaggerated mockery of how some people text. For something like Hello World, this actually wasn't hard at all, it's just a completely ridiculous syntax, but it does have high-level constructs, which make it easy to print strings to the screen. Next up was Beatnik. I couldn't find any online compilers for this, but I managed to find a GitHub repo that had a recreation of it in C that I was able to download and compile locally. I'm pretty sure the idea is to create a poem or story where every word has the correct value in Scrabble points to have a specific meaning, which, since most Scrabble words don't have super high point values would have made this a lot harder if I could only use legal words. Looking at one of the samples for Hello World, I couldn't be bothered, and since it doesn't enforce the use of legal words through dictionary lookups, I just used character combinations to get the values that I wanted so I could print Hello World. It quickly became apparent that for these languages, it's much less painful to rely on trial and error and make tweaks versus actually counting out the number of characters you need to make certain ASCII values. I generally started by getting close and then altering the values slightly until I made the right letter. Maybe someday I'll revisit this only using actual words, but I get the feeling that would probably be a day-long project. Whitespace is what it sounds like, and this is what you can expect from a typical program. Everything is driven by spaces, tabs, and new lines, which means all other characters are ignored and can be used as comments, which does help you from going completely insane while writing this. Although it was really hard not to accidentally add spaces and random places because I'm not used to them actually meaning something, to the point where a single space will completely break the code. The initial compiler I found for this did have a hello world example that I deleted, and then promptly realized that it was treating all tabs as four spaces, which meant that unless I was doing something wrong, it would have been literally impossible to write Hello World. Fortunately, the next compiler supported tabs and spaces, which turned into a lot of tedious counting spaces and tabs as binary to get the right ASCII characters and display them to the screen. Fortunately, once you figured out how to display one character, you could pretty much copy-paste the logic a bunch of times and change the tabs and spaces to the correct ASCII value, but without comments signifying tabs and spaces, this would be a complete nightmare. As you can probably guess from the name, whoever made Brain clearly just wanted to make this language as unpleasant as possible. Which shockingly, it wasn't as bad as the next one, but with syntax that looks like this, it still wasn't great. Fortunately, this is well enough known that I could find another online compiler for it, but the default Hello World program looks pretty gnarly on the surface. I ended up going for a less elegant approach by just getting the ASCII for each character and then shifting to the right, which is impossible to read since there's just an endless number of plus signs. But it's not like doing it the other way would have been a whole lot more readable, so who cares. I saved the worst for last, chicken, 
it doesn't sound so bad until you realize that the entire language consists only of the word chicken and new lines. Which means this is what the sample Hello World program looks like. Yeah. Needless to say, I spent over an hour on chicken, and the best I was able to do was output the character H, as well as doing some basic manipulations to the existing Hello World code to make it print out something else. I feel like I would have figured it out eventually if I'd stuck with it for long enough, but I decided I'd rather not waste the rest of my weekend writing chicken a few hundred times, which for the sake of my sanity, seemed like a good decision. Now, it's one thing writing Hello World in 50 languages, but what about writing a real program that doesn't just print a string in 50 languages? Let me know if you want to see that video, and if enough people want to see it, I'll spend another weekend coding in 50 languages. Except, probably not chicken.